Tories stand accused of fiddling while Rome burns in a retreat on <laughs> costly and unpopular green policies. Low traffic neighbourhoods face extinction and landlords will get longer to meet energy efficiency targets. Meanwhile, a ban on the sale of new petrol and diesel cars from 2030 is now in doubt too after Rishi Sunak failed to confirm it will go ahead. Uh, the Prime Minister is planning to hold firm on not net zero goals while delaying or ditching a host of measures that would increase voters' bills as he faces pressure to tone down Britain's climate commitments. Uh, amid the green backlash, Michael Gove has warned against, and I quote, treating the cause of the environment as a religious crusade. The levelling up secretary said the government was asking too much too quickly from the country. Environmental tensions aren't confined to the Conservatives, though. London Mayor Sadiq Khan is set to press ahead with expanding the ULE zone, despite calls from Labour leader Sakir Starmer to reflect. It comes after the part narrowly missed out on Boris Johnson's old seat in last week's Uxbridge by-election, which effectively became a referendum on the controversial scheme. Uh, well, <coughs> you know, the Tories have kind of worked something out uh, that uh, Sadiq Khan and Labour are struggling with, and that is if you charge people lots of money for something, they're going to want something in return. So what people don't want to do is to pay the ULES fee. They don't want to pay £12.50 to get behind the wheel of their own car and drive up the road. So that, funnily enough, they don't want that. They don't like hundreds of pounds worth of green levies on their energy bills because that costs them a lot of money in the cost of living crisis as well. And the Tories said, hey, going forward, if we offer the people no extra fees for this green stuff, then they'll vote for us. And they will if Labour go forward saying it's going to cost you hundreds of, hundreds of pounds, uh, you're going to have the ULES scheme, but hey, hey, folks, come by our, we're saving the planet, the planet. <laughs> guess what? They'll lose the election. Yeah, I've got to agree with crazy Kev <laughs> on this one, I'm afraid. Look, um, Sadiq Khan, speaking more locally to London, Sadiq Khan, for me, has ruined our streets. I already pay to have my car parked outside my home. That's not normal in other, in other areas. But in London, I've got to pay to have my vehicle outside my house. Then he wants to charge me money to drive around and do my shopping or to do my school run. His low traffic neighbourhoods, oh, this is me, by the way, opposing the UNES outside Good the uh, World Court just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Khan was inside there having his, uh, his, his hearing. Anyway, off the point. <laughs> the low traffic neighbourhoods where you and I live, mm -hmm. uh, Afia, all of the nice posh roads mm -hmm. which people own, they're protected. Yep. Traffic's been funnelled to the main roads. Our biggest one, Queensbridge, now goes past five schools and nurseries, three mm -hmm. parks and loads of council houses. So the poorest people are now getting all the fumes funneled down through them. Yeah. Whereas the nice people who can afford to live on the nice, quiet suburb roads, nothing, no traffic. And that's Dan Sadiq Khan. Not Dan Sadiq Khan, that's Sadiq Khan's choice. If he doesn't change this and stop the US expansion, he's going to lose the next election. Yeah, good, the thing good is point. That if you're going to, uh, there's so much greenwashing going on. And ULES is a prime example of greenwashing. It's a prime example of climate privilege, like you've just described, where you have a rise in poor air pollution in inner cities, poor socioeconomic backgrounds are typically people who will be in those parts of the city and they suffer disproportionately from air pollution. So, in fact, it's, the whole ULA scheme is completely greenwashing. But if the Conservative Party continue down this road of getting rid of all their green policies on scaling back on trying to get to net zero, they're going to use, they're going to lose a lot of voters, mm. which will typically be younger no, they won't. and I, younger no, people. No, they won't. And they younger will. people, they won't, younger people are the ones who typically care more about these issues. And actually, <laughs> because they're being brainwashed. No, 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 not because they're being brainwashed. Because they're the ones that are going to inherit the mistakes mm -hmm. that we have made uh, by I, not taking this seriously. But enough. here's the point: I think we do take it seriously. But what, no, I really, I, what I really struggle with <laughs> is I struggle with policies that make no sense. Oscar, so, I just said that, greenwashing. So, so, exactly. So, you les to me, makes no sense. And, in fact, it punishes the poorest in our society yeah. the most. It mm. punishes the small uh, organisations and businesses who rely on perhaps one vehicle or an older yeah. vehicle to get around. And particularly, if you have a look at air quality around London, where's it really bad? And you're absolutely right, JJ. Uh, it, 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 it horrifies me to say this, but you're spot on. Um, <laughs> hey. No, but, look, it's been funnelled. And we're now funnelling into areas. And, by the way, whilst we've been doing all of this and we've been encouraging people to 
use the tube. Have a look at the air quality on the tube. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Have a look at the quality of air, uh, air quality on buses. It's pretty bad. Mm. And by the way, look at all the stuff that we're having delivered to our homes and how. And it's not all by electric vehicles, sadly. We are not encouraging people to do the right, right thing. And by the way, I'm not some kind of weird climate denier. And I would like to see us do one thing. We can do one thing today, which would probably be popular, which is reduce waste. That would do more than any of these ridiculous policies that they're asking us to fund, any of these ridiculous policies that impact our lives, and any of these policies which, in my view, impact the poorest the most, and it's appalling that we're allowing it to go unchecked because we're all getting fanatical about, oh, we've got to do something, so let's just do anything. But we just run that bias again. <laughs> <laughs> worth pointing out that nine out of ten vehicles in London and Greater London are already ULES compliant. So it's it's only affecting one in ten, and uh, and at I've the end of the day, I've still got to pay. My, my vehicle's US compliant. I've still got to pay for when I go through the ULES zones. But if it's ULES compliant, you don't have to pay, do you not? No, it's a different fee. So so like so my car, for example, mm -hmm. was US compliant. But if I want to drive, travel through central London, it's a ULES zone. You've got to pay. It's like the congestion charge, so to speak. I'm still paying okay. for that regardless. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, well, okay, you're absolutely right, and I'm wrong. <laughs> and